So in this video, we're working on a Honda Civic. Not my usual stuff. I usually do VWs, but where there's a problem, there's a cure. So I'm going to try and solve this. Now this car came in showing the code 1401, a common code. It's um, it's a vacuum air related code, EGR failure code. And as you can see, I'm just looking under this bonnet now, and someone's already been in here, left things off, and haven't. Um, and I will put things back properly. So I'm just doing a visual inspection. This is a bit unusual, it's got two EGRs. So my visual inspection, there's a vacuum solenoid a bit dodgy there. And I end up finding this intake hose also with a hole. All these things can create codes and hassles. So sometimes it can be more than one thing. So this is why a visual inspection is important. So we've got this pump, this hand vacuum hand pump. Click on the link in the description, get one of these. A great investment if you're trying to solve anything like this. And you can also use it for your turbos, which is another video. But as like I said before, these are the two EGRs. And we're going to check that they're holding vacuum. Because this is a common problem on these. The, um, the diaphragm, the rubber diaphragm, actually fails inside the EGR. So it creates a vacuum leak. So really simple. It's just a hand pump vacuum. Comes with a load of fittings, as you see here. Click on the link in the description, like I said before, to get one of these, really easy. So get the correct fitting, I use this one, and just um, put it onto the hand pump itself. You see my fingers on the end, so it's holding pressure. That's what we're hoping for the EGR to do. So this is the hose going direct to the EGR with no splits or diversions. I just took off that hose, put my pump onto it. And it's just a really simple check to make sure that it's, it's holding vacuum. Because if it's not, it'll create codes, and that's where we start. So as you can see, I'm pumping it up, hand pump, and that gauge is not holding any pressure at all. It's going down really, really quick. I mean, if it went down very slow, then that's acceptable, but this is this is not holding any sort of pressure or anything like that. So that is clearly 40. So time to check the second EGR. Very unusual system. I don't really get it, but it is what it is. And it's the same test. And as you can see, while I'm pumping it, it's actually holding vacuum, which is what you want it to do. And you might just hear it pop when I um, end up releasing it with this tab there. There you go, that's the little pop there. That's just showing it's functioning. That's another kind of reference that it's functioning. So now it's, you've got to remove the air box on this, which is, which is I'm not gonna, it's a female dog. Um, <laughs> it's not cool at all, it's, it's just awkward for no reason. Get yourself one of these ratchets, that's another thing. One of my favorite tools, this is a little electrical hand ratchet, which uses this 12 mil to remove the EGR from the side. Give it a little kink, and then you press it and undo it. You've got quite a few bolts on this. You've got a couple at the front, which is really hard to film. And with your new EGR, you want to just open it up and kind of do the same sort of checks as you did on the one that was on the car. I got replacement from eBay, um, cheap replacement one, and um, yeah, because it was really expensive new. So like I said before, we're doing exactly the same test before, and you can see that the diaphragm that one is actually moving up and holding. There you go. And that's how the other one should have performed, but it wasn't, it wasn't opening, it wasn't holding any vacuum, and that's why we have, we're getting the code, and not to mention them other few other faults we've got to address as well. But a simple test before you put it on to make sure you don't have any problems. Use, um, if you have to get a different vacuum hose, you know, just because they can have leaks in it sometime. But um, yeah, really, really simple test. Hand pump, hand pump, hand pump. And if it holds air, you're good. See, just releasing it there. I'm releasing it, letting it come out. There you go. Just so you know it's working. So you don't want to have to put it on twice. Unfortunately, my battery died and I didn't get to show you the removal, but this is the reinstallation of it, which is just the opposite of removal. Just got to try and get it near there and slide it on. Once the airbox is out of the way, it's a bit tight, but you can wiggle it. If you want to make it a bit easier for yourself, you can remove the battery, but I managed to do it like this. So just slide it on. Just like that, like I'm showing you. Put your bolts on, or your nuts, sorry. Um, and yeah, just, just, just. All simple, easy stuff. I always like to put it on with hand to avoid cross-threading it. The first screw turns on hand, and then just tie it up with your hand ratchet like this. It just saves a lot of hassle. This is why I love this tool so much, because you just put it in here and press the button, and I'm just giving it a little tighten up with it, just to make sure it's all all right. 
There you go. Excellent. As shown earlier, that vacuum solenoid was a bit broken, so we got another one from eBay. There you go, all the same stuff. See, it's got that little head on the top of it, which the other one was missing. Just take off the plug. Now this controls both the uh, EGRs, the EGR solenoid, it opens and closes and allows vacuum in, so that needs to be working. If that's leaking there, you're gonna have a problem. And it's only held on by two 10 mil nuts. So that was, that was quite good to catch. Just remove that. There's a couple of nuts and then just replace it with the other one. But this is the time whenever you're replacing parts, make sure they look the same. Make sure they are the same. Same part number. You know? And just do a visual. You can, you can really um, solve a lot of things just by having a decent visual of things just to get yourself a good idea of what's going on. So it's just replacing it in the same place that you removed that one from. It's two 10 mil nuts. Really easy. So back to the EGR, we've got to put on the pipes that go onto it. These, I believe, are mm, 12 or 13 mil bolts. Um, there's a little gasket in there, you don't want to lose that. It's a little bit tricky to get to, but you can get there. You need a few different um, sockets. But if you've got a decent ratchet set, toolbox, I'll um, also put my one in the description as well, you should be okay. So just try and get in there, in and around there. It's a little bit finicky and fiddly, but you will get it done. So the next thing to do was to put back on the vacuum hoses that we took off. Um, now, ideally, I would have liked to have replaced the whole vacuum, the whole vacuum lines with some silicone replacements, but I didn't have that available to me and it just wasn't, I just couldn't do it at the time. So I just put back the old ones and made sure there were no leaks within the old pipes because these are subject to heat and cold cycles. So, you know, they can become brittle, split, what have you. So when you're putting it on, just make sure you put everything on in the right place. Keep your visual because these engine codes are very strange. They pick up a little bit of air. It can cause a lot of problems. So just be diligent in looking at what you're doing. So this is the intake hose. It's got a massive gash in it. And this wasn't the only one. When I was looking at it a bit closer, there was one a bit further down on this same pipe, which was also broken. So clearly it's got a bit brittle from the time it's been there. So I did what any decent mechanic would do and use gaffer tape, <laughs> use duct tape to seal it up. Now I know this isn't the right way, but sometimes when you just want to get things done, these are the little things that you do. And this is not a safety issue. It's not detrimental and it will do the job temporarily. So. I just wanted to get it done, so I did it like that. I know people are going to be disappointed with me. So now it's just about putting it back the way it came off. Slip it behind. A little bit of a wiggle, a little bit of a... Mm, but you'll get it in there. Now the clamps on these ones are 7 30 seconds. It's an imperial size, I believe. Um, the metric, none of them really fit properly and they were round off the bolt, so... You'll just find the side. If you've got a decent socket set, you'll be fine. And then you just put it back on as you're supposed to. See me just taking my time. A little bit awkward, but we're getting it done. There you go. So now this is what it looks like. It's Like I said, it's not the best, but it's not dangerous. It's not a fire hazard. Um, so, you know, I thought it would be okay to take the chance, really. And I'm just doing a visual of just making sure I ain't seen anything or I haven't left anything undone because that's very important. You don't want to fix something and raise codes again. So this is just the engine um, cover. Just a couple of bolts and, yeah, just tighten them up and that's it, really. Really simple, simple, easy stuff. Once you've done all the works, it's just about removing any codes that may be stored in the computer. Now get yourself a little cheap scanner. Once again, it's a godsend. It will save you from spending unnecessary money. One investment. And I'll have the link in the description for this one too also. You can use all the tools that I use so you can just see how I do it. But once you've got it on, simply plug it in and just wait for it to respond. Now you want to delete the codes, drive the car and check the codes again. But these are really simple and really basic. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to get wrong. You just got to say yes, no, yes, no. So now here you see me erasing all the codes. These were the codes that were found on it. So now just simple, click erase. Yep, I want to erase them. 
erased. It is it all all codes that were on the system have been totally erased now. And you can see that in the dashboard when because there's not going to be no more engine management lights. As you can see there. Lovely. So far I've driven it 300 miles, still no engine management light, and car runs perfectly. So I hope this helps. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click that notification button. And if you want to see more videos, different types of videos like this, please put a comment in and thumbs up because I need it so I know that you like these videos. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe. Thank you very much.